All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the CSA Contere's IND mod, which is yet another of the lovely series of mods being released by user Hraban. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a beautiful little set of parts based off of designs from the Indian Space Program, which is pretty cool, because frankly, you gotta admit, the Kerbal community kind of has ignored that particular space program, which is understandable, as everyone likes to play with the parts made by the big names in space, America, Russia, etc. So I think it's pretty cool to get some of the interesting designs from the Indian space program in here. So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what parts we do get. So let's grab the Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then turn on our janitor's closet mod filter, just leaving on Contere's I. ND. And start up here in the command pod section with the KSRO HSF C command pod, which is a pretty simple little command pod, but nice and usable. It will hold a total of three Kerbals, but does require a minimum of at least one to operate. It does have a built in data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, the typical crew report, and then electric charge of 600 and monopropellant of 80. So, all in all, a a pretty good and useful command pod. Now the next one we have is pretty awesome, the RLV Reusable Landing Vehicle, which if we pop right there is a pretty small little thing, but pretty cool looking. I, I really do like the look of this. And of course it does have a built-in ablator for it. It is an unmanned command pod with a built-in data transmitter, lifting surface, RCS built-in, reaction wheel, it does have both a log temperature and log gravity experiment, since of course, no crew for a crew report, and then has electric charge of 500 and monopropellant of 150, and all in all is a pretty solid design. I really do like the look of this thing. So let's pop these off and head down to the next category, which of course is fuel tanks, if I actually stay in order there, and we'll start with the KSROCUS, which does hold 144 liquid fuel and 176 oxidizer and it's a pretty nice looking little tank I do like the detailing on it very nice indeed we then have the KSRO GSLV S1 with 1293.8 liquid fuel and 1581.3 oxidizer and is well just a much bigger tank than the other one and that is good and again a very nice design on it I love the texturing on this one we then have the KSRO HLV dash S2 holding 281.3 liquid fuel and 343.8 oxidizer. Again, a lovely little fuel tank. And then finally, the KSRO PS dash 2 holding 457.9 liquid fuel and 559.5 oxidizer. And there we go on that one. A nice little two-tone uh, little design there. Very good. So that is our fuel tanks. Let's go and take a look at our engines. A few more in here. Mostly solid fuel, and they are awesome. So the first one here is the KSRO HSF service module, which is a nice little thing. It actually goes very nicely with the Mark I command pod right there. I, I actually really like that. And of course, it does have a built-in engine with 80 kilonewtons of max thrust using liquid fuel and oxidizer, but also does have RCS thrusters and holds 81 liquid fuel, 90 monopropellant, and 99 oxidizer. So all in all, a really cool little service module, and again, <laughs> nice and usable with the Mark I command pod, so that's pretty cool. And we then have uh, the KSRO LH40, which is really big engine, very nice, very fun, and it may look like a solid rocket booster. But no, this is actually a liquid fuel and oxidizer radial engine with a max thrust of 167.5 kilonewtons using liquid fuel and oxidizer and having built into it a tank holding 457.9 liquid fuel and 559.6 oxidizer. Very nice. We then have the KSRO PS-3 with 60 kilonewtons of thrust. There we are, a nice little protected engine. 
and does use a solid propellant on this one with 111 solid propellant on the inside. So a uh, inline solid rocket booster. Very cool. We then have the KSRO PSOM, which is uh, a solid rocket booster producing 120 kilonewtons of thrust with 150 solid fuel. We then have the PSOM XL, which is, you know, a bigger version with 125 kilonewtons and 200 solid fuel. We then have the KSRO RKI V2 X2, oh boy, that's a lot to say there, with 383 max kilonewtons of thrust using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and also with a nice gimbling range for control. Very good engine, I like the little detailing in there. Very cool. We then go to another uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer engine producing 20 kilonewtons of thrust. Again, uh, sort of meant as a radially attached one there. Very nice. And does have a gimbling range and also holds 54 liquid fuel and 66 oxidizer. Next one we have is the KSRO PS2V with 198 kilonewtons of thrust. Good design to it. I, I, I like that interior bit there. Very cool, especially with the blue ring. Very fun. And of course, using liquid fuel and oxidizer. Now, the next engine we have is the KSRO PS4, which is an interesting one. I kind of, you know, goes narrow and then goes back out wide again. Quite interesting. And only producing 7.5. 3 kilonewtons of thrust maximum using liquid fuel and oxidizer and having a fuel tank with 27 liquid fuel, 15 monopropellant, and 33 oxidizer. So a small little thing, but still useful. We then have the PS-1 KSRO solid rocket booster producing a whopping 700 kilonewtons of thrust. And look at the size of that thing, it's glorious. And of course, using solid fuel does have gimbling on it and 2100 solid fuel to use. We then have the RKI-25 with five max kilonewtons of thrust using, again, a switching mode between some, you know, nice sipping liquid fuel and oxidizer, or you can boost it up to 110 kilonewtons of thrust by using a lot more liquid fuel and oxidizer. And does, of course, have gimbling on it, so always cool to have the two-mode engines. Very nice. Always, uh, you know, gives you more, gives you more opportunities. And then we have the RKI CUS, which, there we go, pop that on. Again, this one has a two uh, sort of mode, one doing two kilonewtons of thrust and one doing 36.75 and using liquid fuel and oxidizer. And finally, we have the S200, another solid fuel booster. There we go, I love it, very nice. And of course, this one doing 650 kilonewtons of thrust with a solid fuel, having two degrees of gimbling vectoring range and 2,600 solid fuel. There we are. Now we have nothing in command and control, nothing in structural, nothing in coupling, nothing in payload. One thing in aerodynamics being the KSRO fin, which is a lifting surface. And you know, a fin. There we go. We then have nothing in ground. One thing in thermal, the heat shield for the KSRO capsule. There we go, just a little bit too big for the Mark I, but you know, a nice usable heat shield. And then nothing in electrical, nothing in communication, nothing in science, and nothing in utility. So that is all of the parts for this particular mod, and it is pretty awesome. It has some very interesting parts. Now, of course, let's take a look at a monstrosity of a ship that I built earlier, which, <laughs> oh yes, is using, I, I really do like these uh, radial uh, liquid fuel oxidizer engines. They are very cool and go nicely with this central fuel tank. So I've got all of these as sort of the first stage, then a smaller second stage here, and with uh, this lovely RLV reusable landing vehicle right up there in the nose cone for protection. All in all, I think a good little rocket. I haven't actually tested it yet. I built it like five minutes before starting this video, and I'm hoping it works. So let's go and give it a try on the launch pad. I'm thinking it should. I mean, it looks like a pretty solid designed rocket here. And of course, like with all the other CSA Conteres parts mods, uh, the download does come with parts file or uh, ship files rather. So you can actually build the real world rockets that these are meant to. But hey, 
I like using parts in weird ways. So here we are. Let's launch this sucker. And three, two, one. And there we go. Now, of course, we've got some lovely little particle effects for those engines, a good booming sound. And we are uh, flying pretty solidly here for a little bit, which is good. I mean, we're not going to go all the way up, as you can clearly see. We have a lot of fuel to burn through. So uh, this is just simply a test. So let's go crazy and release. Oh, perfect. It actually took care of that for bottom stage, too. Drop that. Start up that engine there, which is always useful. And kind of angle us a little bit better so then I can release the nose cone here in a moment and glide the re-entry vehicle. And then that's good enough. Got the engine. Release. Oh, ooh, that probably wasn't good enough. But hey, we're still safe. <laughs> <laughs> and there we are. All right, might as well turn on this tiny little engine. What the heck, even though it has no fuel. I forgot that that's a liquid fuel and oxidizer engine, a stock one, and I put it on a ship with only monopropellant. Smart move on my part. Smart move. But yes, there is our lovely and doomed little uh, glider here. But you know what? A fun little part mod of a lot of interesting Indian design parts, which I think is a fun addition into Kerbal Space Program. And like I said, not uh, usually a space program that gets a lot of love. So uh, yeah, if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, which I would definitely suggest you go and do, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is really it for today's episode. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course, course that you do come back for the next whenever uh, or well when we hopefully are looking at yet another wonderful mod which actually come to think of it I think next episode will be the last of these CSA Contares mods the one we haven't looked at yet is the one for Russian parts so that will be next time but until then my friends thank you for watching and as always have a good one